Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and in today's painting video, I am going to be painting this little Pokemon, and there's a lot of tips and tricks, so let's go ahead and get into the video. So some of you might have actually seen me print this little guy when I did my review of the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M Pro. And that was a good machine, and if you're interested in, in it, I'll go ahead and put a link to it right up here for you. But, while I did that review, I decided to print a bunch of stuff, and this thing was one of them. Now, a few things to just kind of set the stage for you. I printed it at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, and when I'm painting my FDM models, I'm typically printing them at a 0.08 or a 0.1 millimeter layer height. So this one has a little more layer lines than my typical models, but it just turned out so clean, I just wanted to. And when it comes to the prep and cleanup of this thing, I really did not sand it. I sanded the top just a tiny bit, just because of all the plateauing I got because of the layer height. But the sides and everything, they just looked nice. So that was honestly one of the reasons I decided to paint this, just because I was so happy with the print quality. Also, if you're interested in getting this model, this was actually made by Sparky Face 5 And she is a very talented artist that makes some really cool models. So I would highly recommend checking out her stuff. And I'll put a link to her stuff down below for you. So after I sanded the top of the model and wiped it all down, I went ahead and primed it with a rattle can. And I just used a gray fillable primer. So once it was all primed and ready to go, I threw it directly into the spray booth. And what I used was this Folk Art Yellow Orchid. And all I had to do was thin it down with some distilled water. Then I went ahead and put it in my Gallery Advanced Airbrush. Now this is a dual action airbrush and I really like it because of the nice handle. It's super comfy. And also it's just amazing to be able to just lay down a big base coat. And that has kind of been my go-to when it comes to my first layer, when I'm just trying to get as much paint down as possible. And that's exactly what I was doing here. I was just trying to completely coat this thing with the yellow orchid. Now it took me a couple coats to make sure that I completely covered up all of that gray, but afterwards it looked great. All right, so now we have the Sand True base color all done and it is looking really nice. So I've just gotten a nice even coat everywhere. Now if you notice, I really didn't focus on the stomach or the toes because I know I'm going to be painting these a different color, so I didn't really care because I didn't want to just keep coating it when I don't have to and save that paint. Now that we have that, now it's time to really work on what this is all about, the shadows. I have chose this model specifically because of all of the interesting little shadows that we can create with our airbrush. Now I'm going to show a couple different techniques that we can do to be able to have shadows. When we're looking at the front, you know what, this tail, I would think that just that part would have the shadow and the tail wouldn't. And it's just doing some of those little tiny things. It's really going to add to your model and give it some of that realism and that character. Because there are certain areas like, let's say, right here on the back of the ears, I don't think I would have any shadows there because of like how the light could be hitting it. And that's just how I'm wanting to do it. And another thing is, if I look right here, how this is actually working. We know that his arm is attached right here. But also right here where this shadow is, I could actually get some nice shadowing right there, but I'd have to be very careful with it. And then another thing is right here. So I actually want to mask this off and not have any shadows here. And it's gonna look a lot better once I go in and give some of this edging detail of the actual like, you know, I don't even know what this would be called, like his tiles, <laughs> and just the texture of his skin because it's all of these blocks kind of put together. I guess it would be armor. And so I'm going to go ahead and mask off some of this stuff, but not all of it. And I'm going to go ahead and use some of this Tamiya masking tape as well as using some just blue painter's tape. Now, this is great for edging. This is great for just kind of covering up the areas you don't want having any overspray on. And I was honestly considering whether I want to darken the eyes just a little bit. And I think I might do that just with the airbrush 
First, I'm gonna go ahead and mask everything off and we'll just go ahead and speed through this because this is gonna take a little bit of time. Now, another nice thing when you're doing masking, having some tweezers can be really helpful because there are always these little tiny cracks or something like that that's really hard to get into. So I can easily just use this to kind of get in those areas that I need and then press down and it'll stick and let go of the tweezers. So all I gotta do is that, and now it's got it right in that crack for me. So now I've got exactly what I was needing to mask off this area right here. Then I sometimes switch it around and I'll actually use the other side to kind of get further in that crack so I'm not scratching up my paint that I've already gotten down. But to be able to get some of those areas, it's very helpful to be able to get in there with some tweezers especially when you're using smaller pieces. Okay, so now I've got this area all masked off and you can see how we're gonna be able to spray in this corner and still protect the edges right here. And then I can get a little bit of a shadowing right here. So essentially I'm going to just spray in there and then just grade this out. And then I'll show you how we're getting that exact technique. Now the other area I'm going to be focusing on is right here. So I don't want the tail to actually get any shadowing, but I do want shadowing on this like it's laying over top of the tail. And then that'll help give it some more dimension. Because that's the key here is we're really wanting dimension on this because it's really just a flat color and we need to give something to it to give a little bit of character to it. So all I'm going to do is do that now. Okay, there we go. Now this is the part where we're going to be using the blue painter's tape. So the blue painter's tape is really just going to be that protective last defense. So I don't get too much overspray in the areas I don't want it. So I'm just going to cover that right there like this. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get a nice edge and make sure it's on that tape really well. That way it's going to peel off really easily. Now the other area is right here because I do not want any of that hand to get anything on it. Now when it comes to the stomach, I honestly don't care because I'm going to be painting over that. So all I'm doing is just using this as kind of my barrier and last line of defense so I don't get any overspray right here. Now I'm going to be doing everything really controlled so the masking is super important, but you want to make sure that you just have enough to where you're not going to get any kind of overspray over here on this stuff. So when I'm shooting, I need to make sure that I'm right here getting really close. That's important. Now the other thing when we're going to look at the different types of shadows and things like that, I'm probably going to follow some of these lines just to get a little bit more detail. So even right here, I might just follow that a little bit and also on just a little bit on the arm just so I can get some of that shadowing. Now that is all I'm really going to be doing. So just doing these little tiny things right here is going to help a lot. And then when we're all done, I'll take this off and I might get a little bit of shadow just underneath the chin, but we're going to not worry about that first because we want to deal with the areas we have to mask first. So I'm ready to jump over to the spray booth. Now, what I'm going to be using is this raw sienna. Now, this has got like an orange base to it and it's a brown. So I want to not use it like crazy, but I do want to get it dark enough. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to be holding my airbrush here and getting it like way too thick and really dark. I don't want a ton of this paint on here. So we're just going to be making little passes here and there and we want to make sure we have enough definition, but we also don't want to just overload it with this dark brown and make these shadows stand out more than we want. And speaking of airbrush, I am going to be using this dual action ACE, which is a gallery airbrush. It's GHAC 98, but they call it the ACE. Now this is another airbrush they sent for me to try out. Now the, the single trigger handle airbrush I use all the time and I absolutely love that airbrush and I've fallen in love with it. Now this is a more detailed brush and I'm really looking forward to the, using this because it's got a really nice large inkwell on it 
and the response and how you can hold it it's pretty comfortable like I really like how this trigger is working so we are going to test this out and get this paint in there and start in on those shadows so let's go ahead and jump over to the spray booth so the first thing is is I'm going to strain my paints and that is a big thing you always want to strain your paints when you're putting them in your airbrush because it is going to save you a lot of heartache and not to mention a lot of clogs because you can get little clumps of paint stuck in your airbrush and then you're going to have to just clean it and especially that this is the first time I've used this airbrush, I absolutely am going to strain my paints. Now one thing I like to do when I first get paint in my airbrush is I always test it. I never want to have the very first spray directly on my model. So when I'm airbrushing, the hand that I am not holding the airbrush in, I have a glove on just so I can handle my prints and not get paint all over me because of the overspray. And I also do tests you never want to just directly start spraying your airbrush on your model. You want to make sure that it's actually working and the paint is flowing good. So I do that on my hand. So I do little circles. I also test the pressure sensitivity of the airbrush to make sure that the air pressure is good and the trigger is working properly. Then I do some hard lines and I always like to make sure I can get some nice soft shadows without any spattering. And another thing, when you start actually painting your model, you first want to point your airbrush away from the model and then hold down your air. And then drag it over to your model to start pulling back to bring in the paint flow. Because if you actually push down, you could actually get a spatter of paint that could show up right on your model. And I'm going to tell you, that's not fun. So you want to just hold down the air, move it over, and then start spraying with the paint. Now the first thing I'm doing is I'm really focusing on that edge seam. And that's where I want the most paint to show up on. So I'm really focusing really softly and building my layers up. I'm not just trying to get it super dark on the very first pass. Because I want to keep going back and forth adding a little bit more paint each time until I got that desired effect or that desired color on that leg. Once I've got that edge really nice and dark like I want it, that's when I start fading out that shadow. So I start pulling back my airbrush, that way I'm getting a wider spray and that's going to give me that really nice soft edge and it's going to have a nice gradation into that harder shadow. Then I'm essentially doing the exact same thing underneath that arm. I want to get a nice hard edge and then I start feathering out the paint. So I pull back and make sure that it's getting softer and softer. So unlike the areas where I masked it off and I wanted to have a nice sharp edge and then I grade out from there, what I'm doing for the other legs and the other areas of the model is I'm actually pulling back farther away. That way I'm getting a softer spray and it's actually going to be giving a nice gradient in that crack. So I'm aiming directly in that crack while pulling away. That way I'm getting a nice soft gradient from that crack of that arm in those different areas of the body. That way it's just a nice subtle shadow. And that's giving me some nice contrast in between those different areas of the arms and legs and things like that. And I just want to continue that process through the whole thing. Anywhere I think there's going to be shadows, I'm just pulling away, making sure I'm not getting too hard of a line because I want all of these shadows to be very nice and soft. That's the look I'm going for. Now, if you want to have harder shadows on your model, all you got to do is just bring your airbrush closer. And a big thing I can't say enough, don't try to get the desired color you're looking for in one pass. It's multiple passes back and forth, back and forth. And I'm not going to lie, this was a little difficult for me because I was trying to get used to this airbrush. And this airbrush has a really good control over it, but I could not figure out what the proper distance was for the airbrush to get that desired effect I was looking for. And that was me really just testing. So I was missing some cracks and I was making some of the shadows a little wider than I wanted to just to accommodate for that. But it wasn't until I got to the eyes. The eyes, I finally got it dialed in and I figured out the right distance. 
But the eyes, I honestly, I think I got them perfect because I really understood how to use this airbrush and the control it was giving me, I could not be happier with. And I got that subtle gradation, just what I was looking for. All right, real quick, I just have to say, Thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these awesome people, you will get exclusive access to all of my behind the scenes content and you'll also get access to my private Discord channels. And there, I tell you what, we are constantly talking about everything 3D printing, fixing our fails, and also painting our 3D prints. So, if you want to join, I'll go ahead and put a link below for you. Other than that, let's get back to this video. Alright, so now you can see I've got all of the shadowing done. And looking at it just in general, you're like, ah, eh, some of these shadows look a little sloppy. And, you know, maybe my control wasn't the best. And you know what? You would be 100% correct. Because that was the first time I've ever used this airbrush. And in man, it took me a little bit of adjusting to get used to. But I started realizing that on some of these, like, it just didn't make sense. So for this edge right here, I was really happy with how that turned out. Because I just wanted it shadowed down there, and I didn't want any of this shadowed. But when it came to this tail, once I had it going, I'm just like, uh, it's a, it just isn't working out for me. So I wanted to just bring a little bit more on the other side of the tail too, just because I kind of liked it. I was really happy with how that airbrush actually worked because by the time I got to the eye and the edges of the eyes and stuff, I started getting really comfortable with it. And it has a really good control. And kind of to the point where I'm not used to an airbrush with that good of a control. Um, if I could compare that airbrush to something, it would be like my Harder and Steinbeck because it is really good. But I am really happy with how I got the shadowing on this. And I also, if you noticed, along the bottom edge, I went around and gave it a nice subtle gradation. And when it comes to that, that's just because when it's setting down, I wanted to be able to have a little bit of shadow there as well. And I think that really just kind of brings it out. Now, the next thing that I'm going to be focusing on is I'm going to be masking out this stomach because I am going to airbrush the stomach because when it comes to Sandshrew's stomach and his ears, it's like a lighter cream color. It's not quite white and it's not quite orange. So I'm going to be using this because it's just a, it's really close to like almost a skin tone, but it's on the more white side. So I'm going to go ahead and start the same process I just went through and I'm going to be masking off everything. Now when it comes to the toes, it's probably all going to be brushwork and as well as when I get these like armor plate cracks, I think we're going to go with armor plating because I think that's what it is. And one thing is, is you'll, you'll find along the way when you're in the middle of your process, you might not be happy with how the shadows are going because like I was messing around a lot with the different shadows and seeing what I liked and what I didn't like. But the thing is, just remember, this is only one part of your actual paint job because I've got the shadows, but at the end of the day, when I get all these lines and things like that, it is going to look so much different because once you have all your other colors, it, it just, it keeps evolving. So if you do your shadows and you're just like, ugh, I don't like that at all. Sometimes you might need to redo it, but other times it might be worth just to keep going because once you start adding in all the other things, you might be pleasantly surprised with how it actually turns out. Just, just don't give up on yourself. I'm not giving up on you. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the masking of this belly. So the great stuff about this when you run out, you can just get refills. And that's what I've got here. So if you get this stuff, be sure that you're actually getting the one with the dispenser because the dispenser is so nice to have because it can be a real pain sometimes if you're just using the tape itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just replace that and then back to it. Now when it came to spraying this belly, it was pretty easy. And all I did was multiple passes of getting this stomach completely covered. And I didn't wanna get it too saturated with paint because you wanna do multiple passes 
That way, it's actually not getting too much paint on your actual model, so that way you don't have any of those runs or drips. But the other thing is, is when you're masking things like this, it's really important to just do light coats, because if you do too heavy of a coat, the paint can have the potential of going underneath that masking tape. Maybe there's an area you didn't mask off too well, and then you're going to have to deal with that later. Just take your time. That's the biggest thing that I can't stress enough when you're airbrushing because you don't want to get in a hurry. All right, so I got the stomach all done, and you see we kind of went over the fingernails, but that's perfectly fine because we're going to be painting them pretty much the same color. If I was smart enough and realized that they're the same color, I would have probably masked back here, but oh well. But now I've just got to paint the toenails and then the fingernails, and I'm going to go ahead and do that with my brush. With the same exact color, we're going to use this parchment. And all I'm going to do is put it in here and water it down just a little bit. And then we will be ready for all of our lining that we have to do. So I'm actually going to be using a bigger brush for the actual toes just so I can get some good coverage quickly. Then I'm going to go ahead and get the edges with a finer point brush so I can get those nice details on the edge of the toes where they meet the, the foot. All right, so now we have all of the toenails and fingernails painted. I might have to give it one more coat after this is dry, but we'll see. But we are nearly there. We're ready to move to the next step, which honestly is going to be the <laughs> most intensive part of this entire process. So now we're going to do some lining. And what lining is is essentially when you are just making some very fine lines. And the nice thing about this model is we've got grooves to follow. So we're going to be able to just stay within these grooves right here and just drag our brush. Now, the important thing when you are doing any type of lining on any of your models is you always want to be dragging your brush. Don't ever like go like back and forth or anything like that. It is one continuous brush stroke. So if I'm going to be doing this right here, I'm going to start here and I'm going to keep going until I run out of paint and then pick back up. Another key here is you want to make sure that you don't get too much paint on your brush. So you don't want to overload your brush. You want to just get just the right amount. Then when you start, you want to make sure that you're staying right in that line. Then right when you're starting to run out of paint, you pick back up your brush. So from the side view, it would look like something like this. So I'm at this angle and I'm dragging it down and I'm coming all the way and then I'm picking up my brush. Then when you start back up, you come a little bit before you started running out of paint and then start again and just keep going. Now when you hit something like right here, you don't wanna keep going. You want to orient your model in a certain way to where you can get the tip to start it and then come back down. So that is the important key here is you always want to be dragging your brush. You want to keep this angle and let me show you that angle again. You want to keep an angle like this. So it's the sides of your bristles if you see right there. It's dragging it like that. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your brush at a nice angle, okay? So what we're going to do, now that I've shown you that technique, we're gonna actually do it on all of these cracks. I am not going to be using black on this because I just feel like we are sticking with these orange and brown kind of tones. So I'm gonna use just a really dark brown using burnt umber for this. And I wanna get a clean water dish and I'm going to put just a little bit of water in there and get my brush wet so I can have a nice point to it. So if you see, this is how much paint I actually have on my brush. I haven't overloaded it. I've just gotten a little bit of thinned down paint with some distilled water. 
and you want to make sure that it's not overloaded because if you have too much paint on your brush you are going to get too thick of a line or you're going to go outside the edges so this is something it's better to have not enough paint on your brush and then add more until you understand how much you need to get all right so I am going to start right here on this edge and when you're starting out it's always a good thing to be able to start in an area that not everybody's going to see that way you can kind of get comfortable with how you're going to do it before you do like the front of the face or the front of the model And you can see I didn't get very far before I ran out of paint. So you're just going to have to do this back and forth quite a bit. And one thing I've already noticed that the paint is actually bleeding into some of the layer lines. And what that means is my paint is too thin. So now I've got to thicken my paint just a little bit because it's a little too thin. And that's the one thing you want to make sure your paint is thinned down enough that you're not going to see any brush strokes when it dries but you also don't want it so thin that you see it starting to bleed into your layer lines so it's it's a fine balance and that's why it's always a good idea to put it start in a spot to where you are not going to see it a lot so now we're going to take our thicker paint now and go back over And there we go all right so now I am just going to start this whole model and go through every single one of these lines and one of the other things I will tell you is don't rush this because this is where like your model is going to suddenly just come to life and when you rush it that's where you can make mistakes and it's not worth rushing because you have put all of this work into this thing and it, you just want to take your time and just remember don't get too like in a hurry and overload your brush because that's where you're going to see those weird blobs and you're not going to have as nice of a line so I'm just giving you that warning because it this is something that takes a lot of patience And one other thing, if you've noticed, I'm actually stabling myself to the model. So I have a pinky here, I have a finger here, and I'm also touching my thumb. So that way, my hand is being sta stabilized, and I'm able to get very straight lines with this. So you want to make sure that you are at least holding down some way or at least putting your pinky on your model to be able to stabilize it this is a bigger model so I'm able to really take advantage of how big the model is and everything's nice and dry so I can just grab it and hold on to it and be able to stabilize when I'm painting
So am I happy with this? Absolutely. I think it turned out really good and I think it's cute. Do I think I could do better? Absolutely. I absolutely could have done better. But the thing about this project is I was learning with a new airbrush. I was trying something new and I wasn't used to it. It wasn't until I got to like the eyes and stuff. I was really comfortable with it. And honestly, when it comes to the face, I think that's like my favorite part just because I was finally getting used to that airbrush. I could have done this like I could have practiced and practiced on something else and then came to this to make this video look absolutely perfect and the work of art is just amazing. But that's not the reality of it. Like honestly, when you're doing this stuff, you're going to mess up. You're not going to be comfortable with it, especially if you're new to airbrushing. It's going to take a few models for you to actually start to really understand how that airbrush works. and. Even somebody that's used all kinds of different airbrushes, they always work different when you get a new one. And you gotta get used to that. So that's one of the things that I just want you to keep in the back of your head. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just keep going because all that's doing is adding more hours on that airbrush to where you're gonna get better and better at it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in this next video right here.